Hey, what's up everyone? Jordan, Tito Fit. In this channel, we like to talk about health, fitness, wellness, and living your best life generally as anyone. Okay, so I hope you've been liking or watching our previous videos. We've been talking a lot about um, flexible dieting, tracking alcohol and macros. We've even been showing you a couple of uh, CrossFit workouts. So we got a question on Instagram from uh, Seth Daniel. Now, Seth is asking that if he would work out every day, but he also prefers a four-day-a-week workout program or schedule, what's the best way to increase muscle growth? Push-pull or something like that. Now, so since we are talking about muscle growth, I am going to assume we are talking about a bodybuilding program. Bodybuilding, there's CrossFit, there's powerlifting, there's a combination of both of that, which is basically known in the uh, physical culture circles as power building. So like uh, strength and conditioning for application to sports and performance and things like that. I'm going to assume that you're talking about push-pull program that's a little bit biased more towards bodybuilding. So if you are wondering how to work four day per week program or schedule, training schedule, please don't forget to subscribe and check this video out. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat and the same applies when it comes to bodybuilding, building muscle in general or training. Now, Seth is also asking if he should lift heavy weights all the time. Definitely, if you want to get injured, lift heavy all the time. That's the fastest way to get hurt, to get injured. Your joints can only take up so much of a beating. Now, in relation to that, also in relation to your question, that's gonna lead us to the question of cycling a program, okay? Not that kind of cycle. This is not the channel for that kind of cycle. Cycling a, your training program. So the very first thing you should check is what is your ultimate goal? Build muscle. How much do you weigh right now? How long have you been training? These are questions that need to be answered and taken into account when making a program to train. That being said, if you've been training for a decent amount of time or if you are really, really, really skinny and you're a beginner, there would be some differences in the way that you should train. In my opinion, first you have to determine a decent time frame for you to be able to reach certain goal you can't really build that much muscle in less than a year so one year would be a good time frame now within that year let's call that your macro cycle that's going to be subdivided into smaller meso cycles in training so these meso cycles could last about 12 to 16 weeks at a time depending on how the program would be structured and then following that divided into smaller micro cycles which could last about four weeks at a time. Those cycles are there for a reason because in relation to your question of should you lift heavy all the time, this is where there would be times where your rep ranges would be lower, sometimes in the three to six rep range or almost maximal load, with almost maximal load, the weight would be heavy. And this is the time when you'd be building strength. Now, in order to grow your muscles, you have to get stronger as well. There's a little bit of debate with that because there are some people who grow their muscles and they don't lift uh, weights that are as heavy as, say, like a power lifter. But generally speaking, lifting heavy does have its benefits because it boosts hormones involved in muscle building. Testosterone, namely, of course, very important in trying to build muscle, which is why a lot of people try to cycle the other way. Yeah, if you know what I'm saying. Other hormones include IGF-1 and growth hormone. So these are all hormones that are involved in building muscle. And lifting somewhat heavy weights or heavier weights has been shown to enhance the levels of these hormones naturally in the body. You will get stronger and it would uh, create a favorable environment for those hormones to come up. Therefore, build muscle. After those cycles, you would definitely want to cycle off the weights a little bit. So you would dial the weights back down a little bit, but then the reps are going to increase a little bit. In this manner of programming, this is what's called linear periodization. For example, if you've been doing your reps from 3 to 6, you would now increase to maybe 6 to 10 or 6 to 12 or basically the rep range at which a lot of bodybuilders do most of their workouts because a lot of the old research, a lot of the old science, well, this has now been proven to be wrong, okay? But these reps are were supposed to be 
the ones that would stimulate the most muscle growth. That's why if you look at old bodybuilding programs, all the reps would definitely be around that 8 to 12 range because supposedly that 8 to 12 rep range would uh, damage the muscle fibers just the right amount to create an environment that's good for hypertrophy. In simple English, muscle growth. That's what hypertrophy means. But now, uh, we know that it doesn't really matter as much how many reps you're doing as long as you are fatiguing that muscle properly. So even if you're doing lighter weights, let's say you are at a home gym and you're doing sets with reps of 15 to 20, that's fine. You can still grow your muscle as long as you are training to failure given those very light weights. Now, of course, given that you're going to build muscle also the opposite way, by lifting heavy weights, that's also possible. But in my opinion, it's best to utilize all different rep ranges to always keep your muscles guessing. This is also known as the muscle confusion principle. Your muscles will adapt to what kind of training you subject them to. For some reason, that's the way muscles are built to. They're going to adapt. Your body is a very, very smart machine in that sense. There will be times when you're going to have to change the style of training so this also answers your question as to if you are supposed to lift heavy all the time no you're going to have to confuse your muscles a little bit so you're gonna train from maybe 6 to 12 reps or 8 to 12 reps and then there will be times where you will be training with much higher reps than that maybe 15 to 20 reps bordering towards building muscular endurance now training in this manner cycling your training programs will not only ensure that you have continued progress that your body keeps progressing that you keep building muscle but it also ensures that you don't get injured as much or as often now i'm not a physical therapist but uh, i've been in the industry for 16 years a lot of injuries i've observed are usually what we call overuse injuries these occur from doing a certain type of training for too long for too repeatedly if someone trains with really, really, really heavy reps and very, very low reps all the time, some things are bound to break. So your joints can only handle this type of training so much, which is why it's very healthy for your joints to dial back down the weights, give those joints a little bit of rest, go for higher reps, full ranges of motion, that kind of thing that's very healthy for the joints as well so remember that it's not just about your muscles but it's also about the longevity of your training you don't want to get too big too fast overload your joints not give them time to adapt to that extra weight that you're carrying that being said seth i hope this answers your question as far as the cycling of the program is involved now as far as your split is concerned throughout this time that you're training it would be a good idea to experiment with different types of programs a bro split wherein you would separate your training days if you like to train four days separate your training days by body part for example day one you would train maybe back and biceps day two you would train chest and triceps day three maybe a dedicated shoulder day day four maybe just legs or you could do like what you were suggesting a push pull program four times a week so that would be divided against day one and day two and then day three and day four day one would be a pushing program day two would be a pulling program day three push again and day four pull again so you'd be dividing the muscles into pushing muscles and pulling muscles so that would mean that leg training on day one would be the quads the glutes that kind of thing concentrating on those because they are pushing muscles and then on day two more of the hamstrings because those are pulling muscles you could also experiment with different types of programs so there are programs that do push pull but only the upper body muscles upper body pushing and pulling muscles and then day three would be legs so if you're going for a four-day split, the weight would go doing a, that type of a split. This could also apply to that bro split I mentioned earlier. So push on day one, pull on day two, legs on day three. On day four, it's going to be push again. Now, so on week two, the order changes. On day, week two, you're now going to start day one with pull. Day two is going to be legs. Day three is going to be push again and day four is going to be pull. So you're going to be repeating this cycle for, I don't know, four, six, 
depending on your meso cycle or micro cycle that's how it's going to go and the way that's going to work is that the day one and day four will be the same that being said you get to increase the volume for one muscle group for that specific week and then the next week it's only going to be trained once but every week there will be muscle groups that will be twa- trained twice that being said that's going you know cycling through these types of programs same as what i said earlier is going to ensure continued progress you know don't be afraid to experiment training uh lifting weights strength training this is supposed to be a lifelong pursuit it's more a journey than it actually is a destination you know the end point is not to reach a goal and stop the end point is to continuously change those goals reach your short-term goals reach long-term goals and make new ones uh remember that if you reach a goal of looking a certain way it's going to be a different path altogether to maintain looking the same way or to look a different way things like that and in my opinion uh, this all boils down to your individual goals do you want to be a competitive uh, bodybuilder so maybe you know you'll be bulking and cutting things like that or do you just want to look good all year round that being said what they call main gaining or recomposition body recomposition things like that so questions like these always uh always make me very interested because uh it flexes that mental muscle <laughs> and uh, i hope that answered your question seth so with that being said please if you've gotten this far please subscribe give this video a like thank you very much comment down below what type of programs do you guys do okay so let me know do you guys do push pull do you guys are you guys familiar with macro cycles meso cycles if you have any questions make sure you follow us on instagram uh we do answer i do answer questions on instagram and thank you very much